Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Stories with me, Jesse. Today's stories come once again from the privileged and often immature adults over at Reddit slash Entitled Parents. Let me know what you think of these stories in the comments, as well as any suggestions you might have that we may just use in a future installment. Grab your caffeinated beverage of choice, because we're getting started now. Our first story is titled, Entitled Mom Pulls Kids Out of Preschool After Being Explained the Legally Required Procedures for a Lice Epidemic. So I work in a preschool, and you would think I get a lot of interaction with entitled parents, but honestly, I don't. Most of our parents are great and willing to work with us to help us help their kids in the best ways possible. This was not one of those parents. In light of COVID-19, quite a few of our parents made the decision to pull their kids, whether they had lost their jobs or were working from home or had someone immunocompromised at home. Wise decisions that I don't blame them for, but left many seats open for more kids to be enrolled. So Entitled Mother calls and enrolls her two kids in the school, a five-year-old boy and a two, almost three-year-old girl. Bad kids. Little boy tries to run out of the school after his mom had to carry around a blanket, not allowed, and refuses to eat the foods we provide and behaved worse than our one-year-olds. Little girl was a bit better, prone to the same temper tantrums hitting and had to carry around a baby Moana doll, also not allowed. We gave her the benefit of the doubt, though. Entitled Mother claims there was no way, but she very clearly displayed signs of being on the autism spectrum. Either way, they're there for about a week, give or take a few days, for a little boy who refused to come and was kept home with someone else. When the little girl is one of the multiple kids who got sent home with nits. Now, according to our latest DCF, Department of Children and Families check-in, we are one of the cleanest still operating childcare facilities in the county. However, in any childcare environment, lice is an inevitable consequence of having a bunch of kids around. It's no fault of anybody's. It's just a fact of life. Most parents understand that. The procedure for any isolated case of lice is that when the child returns to school, the parent must give proof that the child was treated. A picture or receipt for the bottle of treatment, the recipe for a home remedy, etc. The child is checked to make sure they're clean, everything is documented, and life goes on. So it's the next day, and entitled mother, little boy and little girl, are some of the first kids in the door despite being the last to go home. Entitled mother shows the director a video on her phone of her treating little girl's head. You're going to have to send me that so I can figure out how to add it to the documentation. Entitled Mother starts getting pissy at this point. I come back from making my breakfast smoothie in the kitchen and escort them to their seats, taking their blankets and putting them in their cubbies and keeping little boy from trying to get up and run out the door while the director explains the next steps to Entitled Mother. So we had kids from seven different families sent home with lice yesterday, any more than two, and I have to call the health department. Entitled mother getting tense. What? I don't understand. You need to explain. At this point, the director clears her throat and takes a drink of water. This sets Entitled Mother off further for some reason. We had kids from seven different families sent home with nits yesterday. That is considered an epidemic. For the next 18 days, we have to do daily head checks and monitor the children with lice. If the number goes down, we're all good. But if the number goes up, the health department will get involved and go to the houses of the kids with lice to rule them out as the source of the bugs before the blame is shifted to us as a facility. Entitled mother storms over and yanks little girl out of her chair by the arm. Oh no, my kids are not going to stay here. You're not going to get an attitude with me and accuse my kids of causing all this. Ma'am, what are you talking about? That's not at all what I meant. You know what I'm talking about! You've been extremely rude to me, and you're accusing me of bringing lice here, and I'm leaving! Let's go, little boy! Wait! Have a nice day! Slams door behind her. This was two days ago. As far as I know, none of the staff has heard from her since. It's a shame. Little girl is adorable despite her tantrums, and I'll kind of miss her. I sincerely hope Entitled Mother wakes up and realizes she's very likely on the spectrum and is able to adapt to her needs. TLDR. Entitled mother gets pissy about the legally required procedures for lice at a preschool and takes offense to throat clearing and drinking water. Thinks we're accusing her of bringing lice to the school and leaves with her kids, slamming the door behind her. Sheesh. That mother was being completely unreasonable for acting like the preschool was targeting her. Which is ludicrous considering that with all the extra precautions due to COVID-19, people should be even more understanding of health-related procedures. But no, she just couldn't stop herself from making a scene and hauling her kids away. 
You can't take every little thing personally. Moving on, our next story is called... Entitled Grandpa Crashes Into Our Car, Then Assaults My Mom. So this happened last summer of 2019. My mom and I were taking my friend's brother back to his parents' house after a week-long sleepover. I was riding shotgun, lol. I came because I needed to head into my brother's friend's house to get my retainer case, which I forgot last time I went there. Also, we had a Honda Civic until this incident. So we were about halfway there when we came to an intersection. There are cameras on the lights. This is important for later. And we were waiting for the light to turn green. And when it did, we started crossing the intersection. And when we were almost through the intersection, this trashy driver, our entitled grandpa of the story, sped right into us going at most likely 65 miles per hour. We swerved into the side of the road and landed with a huge jolt of force. Believe it or not, no one inside or outside the car was hurt. Not even the airbag went off thank goodness though through the side mirror i could see the right bottom side of the car was totaled the light was destroyed the trunk window was severely cracked the bumper was dented and half off the car's bottom right bottom area was pretty much completely obliterated my mom practically getting both physically and mentally ready to gouge somebody's eyes out got out of the car and stormed over to the entitled grandpa's car I got out too and started recording on my phone camera. The entitled grandpa, about 65 or 70, got out of his car approaching my mom and we could see a five or six year old girl, also not hurt, but also very shaken up, sitting in the back seat of the car. This is what happened next. Look what you did, you dumb bitch. You wrecked my car. Look what I did. First of all, you crashed into me. Second of all, it was our green light. It was not. Clearly not aware that seven other cars were passing at the same time as my mom. It was my green light. I swear, women nowadays have no clue on where their place is. Note that this whole time he's been slurring his words and swaying a little. Clearly drunk and over the legal limit. What did you just say? You heard me, bitch. He then slaps my mom, leaving a red handprint on her left cheek, causing her to start crying. Now, I'm a pretty mellow guy, but when somebody messes around with something or someone that means a lot to me, especially when they get physical, I completely lose it. Not caring how old this jackass was, I ran up to him, still holding the phone and recording, shove him using one hand, causing him to fall on his bum. Never! I mean, never! Lay a single finger on my mom again, asshole! You hear me? Before he could say anything, two cop cars and an ambulance pull into the scene. Two cops are telling people to back up. When the other two come up to me and my mom while the two ambulance drivers pick up the entitled grandpa. Is everything okay here? Yeah, we got a call about. He then looks at my mom. Miss, are you okay? That asshole! I point to entitled grandpa, crashed into us, was sexist, and slapped my mom. He's just lucky you got here in time. Yes, that's true. That's what happened. Brother who just got out of the car. Yeah, that's what happened. Brother's friend following him. Yeah, he's telling the truth. Fast forward about 10 minutes and the police have one. Talk to entitled grandpa, witnesses, me, my mom, my brother, and his friend. And two, check the recording on my phone and the traffic light footage. So the two officers come up to us and say, Would you like to press charges? Me and my mom, yes. Entitled Grandpa, you're under arrest for four accounts of child endangerment, reckless driving, DUI, assault, lying to the police, drunken disorderly conduct, and destruction of property. He then slaps cuffs on Entitled Grandpa and reads him his rights and brings him to the squad car. Do you have any insurance that you can present? Entitled Grandpa sheepishly, no. All right, then that adds to the charges, driving without insurance. The police called the little girl's parents and they came and picked her up, apologizing profusely to the police and my mom. So long story short, Entitled Grandpa was sued by my parents for $55,000. They won, by the way. Got his license permanently revoked, given a fine of $1,500, barred from seeing his granddaughter ever again. Sentenced to eight years in either prison or jail. Can't remember which with five years with good behavior. We didn't have our car fixed because my mom traded it and $25,000 for a new Porsche. So everything turned out great. Thanks for reading. Holy crap, that grandpa was a real piece of work. It was bad enough that he caused an accident, but instead of being a man about it, he slapped the woman he crashed into. Who does that? The expression is add insult to injury. 
Not an additional injury to the accident you caused. Good for everyone standing up to him. I'm just glad that little girl made it out okay. Our final story is titled, My Little Sister Punches an Entitled Kid Who Has Been Harassing Her For Months. His Entitled Parents Make a Scene and Said She Asked For It. For this story to make some sense, I need to share a little backstory. I am a soon-to-be 26-year-old guy, and I got adopted when I was 8. My adoptive parents later got children of their own. They're 14 now. Twins, boy and a girl, hence the big age gap. Our parents are both ER surgeons and have always worked their butts off so me and my siblings can have the best life they can give us. They are doing their utmost not to have long shifts at the same time, but since hospitals here are understaffed, they often do have to work overlapping shifts. Me being 12 years older than my siblings, they have put faith in me helping them out whenever I can. This means, among other things, that I am one of the emergency contacts their school calls whenever there is trouble. One day, I am studying at my flat when I get a call around noon. It's one of the school secretaries who informs me that I need to come ASAP to the school and pick up my little sister. They won't give me any more information except from the fact that she is unharmed. Okay, so I hop in the car, drive to the school and arrive about 20 minutes later. As I enter the main building and informing that I have arrived, I am asked to join some people at the principal's office. Before I enter the glass door, I can see my sister sitting in a chair, sobbing. Sitting in two other seats are two visibly pissed off adults and a boy about her age. I recognize the kid immediately. It's the boy that has been bullying and harassing her for months. When I say harassing, I don't mean giving her a shove every now and then. No, I mean grabbing her chest, slapping or squeezing her buttocks, and putting his hand between her legs. Both both our parents and myself have addressed this multiple times to the principal and several teachers. Nothing changed, however, and since I was seeing my sister becoming afraid and reluctant to go to school, I asked my girlfriend, 24, and her sister, 22, for help. You see, they have been practicing karate for several years now. They know how to defend themselves, and I was sick and tired of the school doing jack sh so I asked them to give my sister some self-defense lessons and volunteered myself as a training dummy slash sparring partner. And my sister is good, y'all. The three of us also had a chat with her about when and how to use her newly found skill so she wouldn't use it just because. I enter the principal's office and before the principal offers me a seat, the boy's father scoffs and says something amongst the line of, We've been waiting here for hours just for another kid to show up. I ignore his remark and take a seat next to my sister and start to console her. I ask the principal what the meaning of this is. He informs me that my little sister is being expelled until the end of next week and will have detention every Wednesday for the remainder of the semester for punching another student. Without giving me any time to react, the boy's mother bursts out. Punching? Punching? She committed senseless violence against my son! The necklace father of the boy didn't say anything, but nodded in approval of the nonsense his wife just uttered. Staring at them for a while, I turn to my sister and ask her if this is the boy she's been talking about. She nods. Addressing the principal, I tell him that both my and our parents have contacted the school about the boy's behavior towards my sister, how she's been groped and harassed for months, and about how she's been afraid to come to school. The boy starts fake crying, and before the principal can draw breath so he can react, his father leaps up. How dare you? My son would never do such a thing. Your sister attacked him. I demand she is being expelled from this school right this instant. Trying to ignore the fact that I should have brought an umbrella against the gallons of spit that this man's mouth spewed forth, I inform him again that several complaints have been made against his son's behavior. Now turning to the principal, I tell him that I am appalled by the fact nothing has changed and this, together with the lack of interest in his students' well-being, has left us with no other choice than to teach my sister how to defend herself. Before the father can once again make me regret not bringing the aforementioned umbrella, I add that my sister would never attack anyone without her having a reason for it. The mother, ignoring pretty much everything I said, reminds us that her son would never do such a thing, and that my sister is probably asking for it in the first place. You know, because a shy 13-year-old girl just loves being the center of attention and likes getting grabbed all over her body. I am starting to realize that as soon as I entered the principal's office, I was never going to win the argument. The principal is sitting spinelessly in his chair, observing the spectacle that is unfolding in front of him. The boy is watching my sister, who is still sobbing, with a big grin on his face. 
The father is breathing like an out-of-shape rhinoceros, ready to attack anything that moves. The mother is caressing her son's head while making rude remarks about my sister, and the fact that we must have the worst parents for nobody being present. I stand up and quietly tell my sister to grab her bag. The boy's father asks where I am going, and I answer that I am taking my sister home. His face gets red, shouting, we're not done here. I inform him that, in fact, we are done. I tell him that I will no longer tolerate my sister going to a school that allows a sexual delinquent in the making to do whatever he pleases. I add that any more communication will be through our lawyer, which happens to be her godfather, but that they will probably hear from him first. As for the fallout, my parents were already planning on pulling my sister from that school and having her go to another. Of course, only they knew about it, but I wasn't about to tell that. They were quite shocked I took an executive decision of pulling her out of that school, but 100% have my back. Of course, as her parents, they formally took the necessary steps. As for the school and the little boy, charges have been filed against the school's negligence. TLDR, sister punches a boy that has been sexually harassing her for months. School didn't do shit, so she had been taught to defend herself. She defends herself and gets sent to the principal's office. I get invited to talk about what happened. Boys' entitled parents can't accept the fact they've raised a pathetic little predator in the making and accuse my sister of asking for it and falcon punching their son into a coma. Being tired of this shit, pulled my sister out of this pathetic excuse of a school. Charges have been filed against the school. Damn. What a sad situation for that girl to be caught in the middle of. Schools always preach there's zero tolerance for bullying, but when it's actively happening in front of their eyes, they do absolutely nothing about it. Good on you for making sure your sister knew how to defend herself, and shame on all of these supposed adults for blaming a girl for doing the only thing she could without any support from the faculty. What did you guys think of this story, or any of today's in general? I always love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Anyways, that's all the time we have for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again for tuning in with me, Jesse. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and check out what other stories I have for you. Have a beautiful day, and try to be nice to someone. I'll catch you in the next one.